Yes, it is a very important matter to discuss as it is one of the main differences between one of the main differences between the believers and the disbelievers. Yeah. As you read in Quran, Allah the glorious in Surah Al Baqarah speaking about the pious people. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alif lam mim ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب those who believe in unseen who believe in the unseen unseen yeah the faith in the unseen is not a blind faith for that we don't believe in the myth any myth is rejected by us. If someone comes and says that, let us worship so-and-so animal because so-and-so story. When there is no foundation for what he says, we don't believe in it. Islam is the religion of the truth. Right. And the truth must be founded on evidences. We believe in the true unseen means the reality which exists but we don't see it how do we know that it exists in spite of we not able to see it the answer is our reason our brain our minds yes. our aql so we believe in many unseen things which are fact Allah, the glorious is the greatest fact is this existence. There's no fact more important and more evident than the existence of Allah, the only God. But no one from us has seen God in his own eyes. Imam Ali السلام, once was asked, Hal ra'ayta rabbak? Did you see your Lord? He said, Waihak. Hmm. How can I worship without a Lord him. without seeing Him? Yeah. Yes, I did see Him. Hmm. I did not see Him in my eyes. I saw Him in my aql and hmm. heart. Yeah. Means I saw the evidences. Hmm. For that we say that the unseen is a fact which is beyond the sense of our five senses mm. because our senses are limited as you know every human sense and human ability is limited even our thinking is limited for example we see things which are nearby but can you see now what is going on in other country no. without having camera or video link? No, you cannot see. Mm. It is going on somewhere else, but you cannot see because the limit of your seeing, the sight of the human being is limited. Yeah. Same also hearing. We can hear voices which are in certain limit. But sometimes voices which are very near to us we are unable to listen to, we are unable to hear because the radiation is so low that we cannot hear it. Yeah. And also, everything which is away from us, we cannot hear it, which means that our hearing ability has got its own limits. Right. We can carry things up to some extent, up to some limit. But no human being can carry 1,000 tons out of question. True. No, no human being can carry one dolphin, which is, you know, the dolphin reaches to 150 tons. Mm. No human being can carry one 
dolphin because our abilities as human beings are limited. For that, there are many facts which are unseen by our senses. But since they are facts, we believe in them. Every Muslim believes that God is the only God. We don't see him because we cannot. And no one can see God, neither here nor hereafter. Because Allah will not change. Some people claim that, yes, you can see God hereafter. That is completely wrong. Right. Because Allah will not change. Allah today is Allah tomorrow. Allah who cannot be seen today will never be seen tomorrow as well. Because Allah says, لا تدركه الأبصار. No sight can reach to Allah. But on the day of judgment, Allah. Even then. That is also one of the big misconceptions among some Muslims that they say on the day of judgment he will be able to see Allah. That is wrong. So that means the interpretation of certain verses is... That is wrong interpretation. Wrong. Wrong. The real meaning. You see, always the mutashabih of Quran, the verses, which can have more than one meaning, should always be referred to the muhkam. Muhkam means the very clear verses which mm -hmm. have only one meaning. Okay. Allah says, La tudrikuhu al-absar. And the Prophet himself, peace be upon him and his whole progeny, he explained easily and clearly to everyone that Allah will never be seen by anyone, neither here nor in the day of judgment. That's it. And those verses that people take and say that, Yes, they will see him. No, they did not understand the meaning of it. Let them go to the Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, and ask from him what is the meaning of this verse. Okay. Okay, let us continue. The unseen. Yeah. Those who believe in the truth believe in God, though they don't see God, but yeah. they see him in their hearts. Mm -hmm from the evidences, which is evidences which are everywhere. We didn't see any of the prophets, but we believe in all of them. Yeah. We believe in 124,000 prophets. We believe in 313 messengers. We believe in five Ulul Azm. All of them, we believe in them. We don't discriminate. We believe in all the prophets. Okay. We also believe in people who are alive. Like Al-Khidr. Hazrat Al-Khidr. Al-Khidr is mentioned in the Quran when he was with Musa alayhi salam and he taught Musa many things. Al-Khidr is still alive. That is the faith of all Muslims. Yes. All Muslims. Shia Muslims and Sunni Muslims in all their divisions. Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, Sufi, Barelwi, Diubandi, and so on. Salafi, Wahhabi, Ahl Hadith. Go on. Lot of fractions. All of them believe in Al-Khidr. Anyone from us has seen Al-Khidr? No. no. But we believe in him. Yeah, we do believe in him, yes. We believe in Al-Khidr. Imam Al-Mahdi, alayhi salam, the twelfth Imam of Ahlul Bayt who was born in Samarra in the year 255 after Hijra. We believe that he is alive. We have not seen him. But we believe in him. Now you find some people come and say, oh, if he is really existing, then show us where he is. Right. Where is he? We tell them that this logic of show us is the same logic of the 
non-believers who said, Arina Allah jahra, who told Musa alayhi salam, show us Allah openly. Those who don't believe really in the unseen, mm. they want to see things which they cannot see. You know, those who said, Arina Allah jahra, Allah said immediately, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّائِقَةُ بِظُلْمِهِمْ The disaster came on them. So, those who don't believe in Imam Al-Mahdi today are not really believing in the unseen of Islam. Right. Every Muslim should believe in whatever the Prophet informed and the Prophet informed the Muslims and the Ummah that Imam Al-Mahdi will remain for long alive and will come and reappear again and will fill the earth with peace and justice, justice yes. after it was being filled by injustice. Right. So we the followers of Ahlul Bayt are the real believers in the unseen. Yes, mm. the real unseen, which are the facts, not the myths. Mm. We should not mix. If someone comes and tells me that Allah has got legs and hands and face and nose and ears and like any human being, I tell him, no, he said, no, you don't believe in the unseen. I say, no. Hmm. It is not unseen, it is a myth. So myth, they do exist, isn't it? The myth it, it, is something which is not real. No, but it's Just still claimed. Exists. Like those who claim that, for example, let us worship any animal. Yeah. A myth. There are thousands of myths among the ignorance. And among people, the myth, for example, nowadays, even in Europe, they have what myth that number 13 is a bad number. Yeah, bad and luck. And for that you find in many uh, big buildings, multi-story buildings, they don't have... Number 13. 13 story. Yeah. yeah. 12, 14. Yeah. No 13. That's yeah. a myth. That is a myth. Baseless. <laughs> but it is still in the life of many people. We don't believe in the myth. We believe in the unseen, the truth, yeah. which is unseen. Right. And this is very important difference between the real believers and the others who are not really believing in the all truth of the unseen. Mm. Yes, but uh, um, human nature yes. is curious. Yeah. We have a curiosity in us. We want to, like have some kind of a significant signs to satisfy our curiosity, isn't it? Of course, there are many. We don't believe in any unseen which has no evidence, yeah. no hints, no proofs. Take every part of the true unseen facts. Mm. For example, the existence of Allah. Allah, yeah. the evidences are more than okay. counting. Mm. And you find the miracles that Allah has shown the people. Yeah, of course. And the miracles of Allah are also out of count. Mm. Yeah, of course, countless. All the miracles which were being sent with the prophets. Yeah. Uh, and we have most, a call? most important miracle I talk to I talk about it inshallah after this after call. After the call, yes. The yes. everlasting miracle. Inshallah. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. May I say it? Gujirubad Glasgow to Polja. Ji. Molana, it the Likawa ke belief in the unseen. Yeah. So, ye to hamne to Allah ko maan diya aur hum apna iman la li la ke hamne kalma pal diya. 
और हम डट गए हैं तो मौलाना कुरान में लिखा हुआ है कि डट जाओ ईमान वालों तो जो ईमान ला जिस जिन्होंने अपना ईमान लाया और वो डट गए हैं उनको क्यों फिर से डराते हैं अच्छा। उनको जिन्होंने नई लिया ईमान उन्होंने नई कलमा पढ़ा जो नई जो नई कहते कि एक ही अल्लाह है उनको क्यों नहीं डराते कि उन्होंने ईमान भी लाया कलमा नहीं पढ़ा तो जिन्होंने जिन्होंने पढ़ लिया उनको क्यों डराते हैं वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन सुनिए सुनिए ईमान जो लाते है उनके दिल में अल्लाह के खौफ है और उनके दिल में अल्लाह के खौफ के साथ ईमान का सुकून होता है सुबह अल्लाह इसलिए किसी के दिल में सुकून नहीं होता ईमान के बगैर बेशक जिसके दिल में खुदा के हकीकत यानि ईमान अगर दिल में नहीं है हमेशा दिल में घबराहट होता है hmm, घबराहट होता रहता है चूंकि ईमान नहीं है अल्लाह तुरान में अरशाद फरमाता है अलाब सिर्फ और सिर्फ खुदा की याद से दिल का इतमान होता है बेशक शायद आपको याद होगा इकबाल का कलाम है न दौलत से न दुनिया से नगर आबाद करने से तसली तसली दिल को होती है खुदा की याद करने से ओनली सिर्फ और सिर्फ अल्लाह की याद करने से तो जो अल्लाह से डरता है उसके दिल में सुकून होता है जो अल्लाह से नहीं डरता उसके दिल में हमेशा खौफ हरास घबराहट रहती है वंडरफुल so uh, okay aga coming back to the topic yes please uh, belief then what would you say to the belief in the uh, hereafter yes of course that's also part of the ghaib in fact the iman the faith in the unseen is something which forms the main components of our iman we believe in allah and allah cannot be seen in my own in our own eyes but we see the greatness of allah through the evidences mm. we believe, believe in the hereafter yeah and none of us has seen the hereafter but we believe in it surely because it is a truth we believe in all the prophets we believe in everything which was which was mentioned in quran allah speaks in quran about many 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 things many incidents many events took place in the history of the prophets and people we believe in all of them because we believe in the unseen based on evidences we believe in for example isra and miraj Mm-hmm. and no one no one from us so isra al miraj but mm. we believe in it yeah and no muslim can deny isra al miraj there is authentic evidences both mm-hmm. in sunni and shia books in fact many sunnis say those who deny miraj are non muslims and imam jafar sadiq al islam say that anyone who denies miraj is not from our followers mm. so we believe in isra and miraj we believe in everything which is mentioned in quran and also in the authentic hadiths mm. so without the faith in the unseen no one can be a believer in allah mm-hmm. Agha, we would, you were going to uh, talk about a miracle okay that before this call came okay the miracles what what is the meaning of miracles miracles yeah. are facts not imaginations because many people have imaginated miracles mm. someone says i saw the photo of mary on that church 
and someone said, I f saw the photo of Jesus on that place or on that mountain. Yeah. Lot of things which are imaginated. No. The imaginations are not miracles. They are not more than imaginations. Mm -hmm. But the real miracles mm. are real phenomenon or phenomena. Mm. Phenomena which take place by order of Allah, which goes out of the system of life. For example, system of life is this, that the fire burns. Any fire burns anything else. Yeah. If any human being puts his hand in any fire for five minutes, Actually, his yeah. hand will be burnt. Mm. But when the miracle happens, Allah orders the fire not to burn Ibrahim. Subhanallah. Allah says, Oh fire, be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim. So when the fire does not burn, means something out of the system. No one can make the fire stop burning, but only Allah. Miracle. A dead person is dead. No one can bring the dead back to life. But Allah gave Isa السلام, the ability to give life again to the dead. I make the dead alive again with the order of Allah. Allah gave the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, the greatest prophet, the greatest messenger, the most beloved servant of Allah. Allah gave him many, many, many miracles. Most important miracle of the Prophet was the Prophet, the miracle which remained and will remain till the end. Everlasting prophet, miracle which is Quran. SubhanAllah. Take few examples. Quran was revealed from Allah on the Prophet. The enemies of the Prophet who did not want to accept the fact because of many reasons, some of them out of arrogance, some of them out of uh, political or financial reasons, some of them because of hatred to the truth. Those who did not want to accept the truth, they said, no, he is a liar. This book is not from Allah. Allah challenged them mm -hmm. that if you claim that this book is not from Allah, it means from where? From people like you, human beings. You are also human beings. Okay, then you bring, you bring just then 10 chapters like this Quran. Not 10 chapters, at least one chapter. Fatu bi suratim min mithle. Just one surah, one chapter out of 114 chapters. chapters you yeah. bring just one, something like one of them. Let it be one line. All the enemies of Allah, all the enemies of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and Quran could not bring even one line, even half a line like the Quran. None. This is itself a miracle. Mm. And Allah has told people, فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا means if you are unable to do it and you will be unable to do it. You see, Allah is giving them the, the result right from the beginning. Yeah. وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا means you will never be able to bring to bring anything like Quran. This is one. 
take more. Nowadays, we have got the computer. Hmm. In the computer, it is very easy to check the wordings of Quran. Just you enter one word in Quran and see this word has come in Quran how many times? It is amazing, amazing. Not to us only, to non-Muslims more. Yeah. To find that Quran mentions things which are of some relation, either opposite or like that, either opposite or equal. I give you some examples. Mm -hmm. Dunya, our worldly life, yeah. is mentioned in Quran 115 times. Right. Akhirah, hereafter. You see, we have got dunya and akhirah. Dunya means this world. Akhirah means hereafter. Dunya is mentioned in Quran 115 times. Hmm. Akhirah is mentioned in Quran 115 times only. Both. Hmm. 115 times dunya. Hmm. 115 times akhirah. Wow. Okay. Angels and Shayateen means devils. Angels are mentioned in the Quran 88 times. Okay. Devils, Shayateen, 88 times. Wow. Life and death, these two opposite things. Yeah. Life, death. Mm. Life is mentioned in the Quran in 145 places. Means 145 times life has been mentioned in the Quran. Mm. Death is always also exactly mentioned in the Quran in 145 times only. Oh, life, death. Mm. In the Quran, same number. 145 times mm. life, 145 times Death. Also, benefit to people and harm to people. To be beneficial to people is something which is very much recommended. To be harmful to people is very bad and mm. is a sin. So benefit to people is mentioned in the Quran 50 times. Okay. Harm to people is, co is in Quran 50 times. <laughs> okay. People. Allah has created all people. And Allah has sent to the people messengers to guide them. Mm. The people without messengers will be lost. You read in Quran, the people, Nas, Nas, nas. means people, are in Quran 368 times. Three, six, eight times people. Rusul, Rusul means messengers. 368 times. Huh. Which means that the human society and the messengers are two things. One is in need of the other. Right. The human beings without messengers Message. will be lost. Yeah. Okay. We have got A'udhu Billah, which is seeking refuge of Allah from the shaytan. Hmm. We call it A'udhu Billah, A'adh, Isti'adha, means Fasta'adh Billah. It is in Quran 11 times. Okay. Iblis in Quran 11 times. Yeah. 
Iblis in Quran was mentioned 11 times. And the seeking of refuge from Iblis 11 times. Okay. We have got the difficulty and we have got the thanking. The hardship and thanking Allah. Subhanallah. Both are mentioned 75 times. Allah, subhanallah. Which means that even the hardship we have to thank Allah because Allah has mercy on us always even in the hardship. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Shukran Allah. So the hardship is mentioned 70 times, 75 times. The thanking of Allah is mentioned 75 times. Five times. We have got the dead mentioned in the Quran, dead people, 17 times. And same number, those who gone astray. Those who have gone astray. Wow. Valun. Okay, what a comparison. I mean, 17 means times dead. 17 times, dead? which means that those who have gone astray, astray are dead. My God. Wow. We have got also intellect, aql. Hmm. Aql in Quran has come in 49 places. Aql, intellect, reason. Hmm. Nur, light, is 49 times. Which means that Aql, intellect, yeah. is the light. Light, enlightens, yeah. The list is very big, very long list. Hmm. I think we need... God has tried to create a balance, if you, if you see, you, Allah if you has created, amazing. let me add here, Allah has created, Allah didn't try, Allah, kun fe kun. Yes. we try, Absolutely. we try, we Allah, try. kun fe kun. Yeah. whatever Allah wants will happen immediately, it's done. Allah mentioned man in Quran 24 times. Allah has mentioned women in Quran 24 times. See, man 24 times, women 24 times. See the justice of Allah. Subhanallah. Because both of them are created by Allah. Subhanallah. Okay. Let me here also mention that Allah has created many prophets. But Allah says in Quran, in the Isa عند Allah. Adam. The example of Isa with Allah is like the example of Adam. Right. Adam was created without father and mother. Mm. Isa was created without father. Yeah. So the most, the, the, the similarity yeah. is more between Isa and Adam. Right. Adam. Okay? Read in Quran, you find Isa is mentioned 25 times. Mm -hmm. Adam is mentioned also 25 times. And Allah says they are similar to each other. Yeah. So, the miracles Subhanallah. of Quran cannot be limited. Limitless. Believe me, if we talk about this subject for Hundreds of hours will not cover it. Hmm. Thousands or millions of hours will not cover it. But I want to say that this miracle of Quran is everlasting. It is with us. You can open the Quran, which should be in every Muslim's house. Read it. Think about it. And it is not for us only. It is for every human being. Because... It is for all human beings. Mm -hmm. So, all the miracles of Quran are confirming that this book is from God. Absolutely. Yes, please. Right. Um, 
everything, so everything mentioned in Quran yeah. that we didn't see, yeah. do we have to believe in it? No doubt, yes. Of course. Of course, yes. Everything mentioned in the Quran, we believe in it. We don't need to see it. Allah spoke in the Quran, mentioned in the Quran about all the story of Yusuf and what happened for Yusuf. Do we need to go and see? No, I, I, I should see the photographs yeah. or, or the video clips of Yusuf to be sure that this story in the Quran is accurate. No. Whatever Allah says in the Quran is haqq, truth. In هذا لهو القصص الحق. These stories in the Quran are the truthful stories. Everything. We don't have any Muslim who argues with Allah, who doubts the truthfulness of any Quranic word or letter or prophetic word or letter yes we must believe and we say Rabbana amanna bima anzalt our Lord we believed in whatever you revealed wattaba'na rasul and we followed the messenger faktubna ma'a shahideen so write us with those who witnessed the truth. Okay. Uh, can we uh, deviate from the topic? Um, I have a few questions that have just come. Yeah. Um, first of all, I think in the previous program, yeah. um, I think it was mentioned that uh, wearing steel is haram. Is it? Not haram. Steel. S wearing steel or? Not haram, makru. Makru. Yeah, makru. But. Uh, wearing, wearing of gold, and gold is of course uh, gold and real sil real silk is haram for men, for men. yes otherwise wearing steel maybe it was not clear haram. no not haram because it wasn't clear so this this question has come up so because uh, in the uh, ayami um, muharram we wear those karas we come out from the tabuts as a mannat we wear these no and problem. they're made of steel no, not haram okay not okay haram. Now, there's a very sensitive question that has come up, like I said in the beginning, Bismillah. that um, a donor gives two eggs to two different families. Donor man. Donor man. Gives two eggs to two different families. Man or woman? Egg should be, I think, woman, right? Yes. I'm I mean, a lady. From a man to a, to a lady. Okay. Okay. And uh, to two different families. Mm -hmm. so, so one of is perhaps a girl and the other is a boy okay right and by coincidence they marry so what does ashara say to that they cannot marry they are brother and sister they are they in, in ashara it's it's haram isn't it yeah i mean in, in, in the reality because our faith and our religion is the reality that is in the reality they are i mean if the both eggs came from one human being, mm. one was male, the other was female, and mm. then they grew up, they cannot marry because they are, in fact, sister But if and they brother. don't know whether they are related. They don't know that is a different issue. That's it. But this is it. Since they know, from the minute, second, they know and discover they immediately are not allowed to have any married link or bond. If they don't know, they don't know. They don't but know. since they know, the minute they know, then the marriage bond is finished. Null and, and void. Not, yes, null, null and void. Mm. And they cannot have any married bond okay. because they are. Brother and sister. Okay, there's another um, rather delicate question, sensitive question. A family of five, yeah. uh, one girl and two sons. Yeah. The girl marries and moves out of the house. The youngest of the two sons passes away. 
Now, the parents are so insecure about their only son that they sleep together. The son and the parents sleep together. Yeah. What does Ashara say to that? And it vice versa applies to the girl, one survi surviving girl. It is not good to sleep, I mean, for the mother and father to sleep in the same room On the same with room. their children. It is not good. But is it haram? It's not good, it's diff different to whether it's haram or... Sometimes it becomes haram when the husband and wife I mean, as husband and wife, they have got the but right to have their relationship as husband and wife. Yeah, but he's a grown-up son. Then it becomes haram. You see, if the husband and wife have any sexual relationship in front of their son or their daughter, they are doing haram. In fact, we have got hadith that even the little child, even the little child, a child of, say, six months don't keep him in the same room with the father and mother when the father and mother want to have their married relationship otherwise if that small child listens to their breath you know breathing he might turn in the future to be a bad person for Nikita so, we should keep children away and not make them sleep where the father and mother want to have something which is their right as husband and wife. But children should not hear even the breath of father or mother when they are in their married relationship which is a sexual relationship. So that is a small child. What about if he's a grown-up boy or girl? How can he see his mother and his father doing something which is allowed for them, but not allowed in front of a grown-up children? Okay. Um, another question just come up is... But uh, in general, if they yeah. want to sleep same room and there is no... Uh, such relationship between mother and, and father. For example, mm. very old man and very old women and uh, they are not in the mood of having some uh, any sexual relationship between them. So they ask their son to sleep with them same room. That is not haram. It becomes haram when there is something between husband and wife which is not allowed to be seen by others. Okay. Um, yes, please. Another question which is d quite different um, is that um, why there's so much poverty in Iraq now? We understand that during the regime of Saddam, you know, things were different, but uh, so much homes is going there. Yet, you see little children begging outside the roses and the women inside the roses pleading, begging for arms. Why is it now? Number one. Can the caller wait, please? Because we... Let us important. take the caller. Okay, we'll, we'll take, take the, the call. call now. Hello, yeah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, Sister uh, Muhammad Ali from Birmingham. Alaikum Asalaam. Uh, Asalaam to Sayyid as well. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Uh, Sayyid, the, the topic is the belief in the unseen. And uh, would you not agree that you need the seen in order to understand the unseen? For if it's unseen, then I, I for example, could say that the whole world is, uh, you know, sort of ruled by fairies, for example. There is no proof. But you need the seen, or oh, the proofs of Allah, in order to understand the unseen. Of and, 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 and would you say that when... 
uh, one of the prophets sort of um, asked, how will you raise us from uh, uh, resurrect after in the uh, la- uh, afterlife and show us? And uh, obviously we had the test of the, 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 the pigeon being sort of uh, killed and then being called from various points. So is, is, did the prophets also um, have doubts about the unseen or was it for extra um, uh, uh, conviction? And did Imam Ali, when he said, I see the unseen as it's in right in front of me, uh, w- w- was that uh, different from the seen or un- of the unseen of the prophets? Okay, brother. Thank you. Number one, there is no unseen which is a true unseen. I said in the beginning that we should differentiate between the true unseen mm. and the myth. Yeah. Myth is myth. But the true unseen is a truth which is unseen. Not that because it is not true or not existing, but because we lack the ability to see it. It is existing. As we say in the knowledge of logic, we call it Adamul Wujdan. لا يدل على عدم الوجود means if we don't see something if we don't find something it does not mean that it does not exist وجدان means finding by any way of finding وجود means existence lot of facts are existing but we don't see them Every true unseen is supported by number of seen evidences. The greatest unseen fact is Allah. But this greatest unseen fact is being supported by uncounted seen evidences. Everywhere in this universe, everything has got evidence that Allah is the creator. The atom in this earth, moon, Jupiter, Saturn, everywhere in this galaxy and every galaxy, same atom. Saying that the creator is one, same, la ilaha illallah. As we say in Arabic, wa fi kulli shay'in lahu wahid, wa fi kulli shay'in lahu ayatun, tadullu ala annahu al-wahidu. In everything there is a sign, in everything there is a sign that he is the one. So there is no unseen not supported by seen. Mm -hmm. This is number one. Number two, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asked Allah, قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحِي الْمَوْتَى Ibrahim asked Allah, oh my Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Allah asked him, didn't you believe? He said, بَلَا, yes, I did believe. وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي I want more peace in my mind. Allah told him to خُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ for pigeons and, and the story which is in Quran. An example, a practical example of how Allah gives life to the dead. Ali alayhi salam, his faith in Allah was the top because he and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them and their holy progeny, believed in Allah like no one else. As the hadith says, Ya Ali. ما عرف الله إلا أنا وأنت أو علي no one knew Allah really but only myself and you سبحان الله وما عرفني إلا الله وأنت and no one knew me really but only Allah and you وما عرفك إلا الله وأنا and no one knew you really but only Allah and me سبحان الله I 
believe that this hadith is the greatest hadith greatest, absolutely. in the status of Ali. But no one knew his greatness, but only Allah, Allah. and the Prophet. So, the level of the yaqeen that Ali السلام, had, he said, لو كشف لي الغطاء مزدت يقينا. His yaqeen was top. His yaqeen, surety in the fact of Allah and all the facts of this universe complete. Yes, please. We have another caller. Yeah. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam. Asalaamu Alaikum to both of you. My question is, uh, it's about a Prophet's hadith saying Prophet? that my Ummah will hadith. do exactly whatever the Jews will do. We have got Wahhabi, we have got Jewish Zionism, and now we have got Wahhabi Zionism. But they don't kill their own people, and how come Wahhabi Zionism kill their own people? What's this, the question? Can, can you, sister, can you repeat it again, no, please? Just brief the question. Can you repeat it? Right. You, you, know, you know, there's a prophet hadith saying, my ummah will turn out exactly same as Yahud. Yeah, not, not like Yahud. No, 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 no. No? No, the hadith says that, the hadith says that the Ummah of Musa was divided into 71 sects. The Ummah of Isa is divided into 72 sects. My Ummah will be divided into 73 sects sects. Okay. All of them will be astray except one who will be saved. This is the hadith which is in Sunni and Shia books. All yes, right. sister, there is or uh, there are many similarities between the enemies of Ahlul Bayt and the Jews. Yeah. For example, the enemies of Ahlul Bayt believe in Allah being body like human body and they insist on that and they say that Allah has got head, Mazada. legs, hands, fingers, everything. This is exactly what the Jew, even the Jewish people did not bring it from, from Musa. They took it from the non-Muslims before them, from the Yunnan and the Greek, so you find it among some Muslims. Mm -hmm. They think that God is a material. And for that they say that God is not everywhere. The enemies of al -Bayt, they claim that God is not everywhere. God is only in the sky. Not everywhere. Why? We read in Quran, Allah says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَهٌ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَهٌ He is he, Allah is the Ilah, means the God and the sky and God on the earth, means he is everywhere. Wa huwa ma'akum aynama kuntum. He is with you mm. wherever you are. Mm. And we are not in the sky, we are on the earth. Yeah. So Allah is with us. Mm. But the enemies of Ahlul Bayt deny this fact. Mm. Yes, please. We have another caller. Yes, Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa Alaykum as-salam. Olana uh, Musavit Bandali. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have you recognized me? Yes, please. Yes, yes. How are uh, you? Alhamdulillah, all right. Yes, please. Molana, I wanted to make a point and I want your comment on it. Uh, now, say, can you see the light? Or the light makes you see? Can it, you see when the it light? Com it comes to the point that you can't believe in uh, things can't be seen. So can can a human being really see the light or human being yeah. see the things? Yeah. Yeah, right. That is also a good argument. Good? Yes, it is. It is yeah. yeah, good. And also, we have got thousands of arguments, I mean, evidences. Once upon a time, a teacher who was not believing in God, he was telling his students that I don't believe in God because I didn't see him. One boy stood up and said that, oh, my 
Friends, I'm telling you that our teacher has no brain. Oh. He said, how come you How can speak? you say that? <laughs> he said, anyone from you saw his brain? No one saw his brain. So when no one saw his brain, according to his logic, then he has no brain. So we have got many evidences, mm. many evidences mm. to prove that the unseen is truth based on evidences. Yes, okay. please. Um, we were talking about the poverty in Iraq, about okay. the Khums and that the... Okay. Number one, the poverty in Iraq mm. is not a result of one year or two years. It is a result of decades of uh, poverty which was imposed on the Shias mm. in Iraq mm. by the tyrant mm. ruler Saddam and his people. Mm. Uh, in Iraq today, we have got more than four and a half million orphans. Yeah. Khums money... Where does it go? Don't this? think that the Khums money uh, can... I mean, the Khums money which is reaching Iraq cannot solve the problem even of 10% of these people. Really? Because the amounts of homes are being spent in the most required expenses of the Hausa, means the teaching and also the, the welfare for the orphans and widows and hospitals and many good work. But the amount of homes reaching there is not enough at all to cover, I say, 10%. It might be even not even 5%. Okay. But we hope that the government of Iraq, if the people in the government will become sincere to Allah, you know, yeah. Iraq is having an emerging economy and Iraq has yeah. oil. Yes. So if the money is being really diverted to the benefit of the people, the poverty will be erased or at least minimized. We hope that every mu'min should fulfill his responsibility in paying his khums, yeah. which is the right of the poor people. Yeah. And number two, we hope that the Iraqi government takes real steps to see that the money of oil in Iraq goes to the service of people, not to the pockets of some ministers or yeah. so influential people. Yeah. yeah. So the problem is not that the khums is not being spent on them. It is khum spent on them, no doubt about it. But it's not enough. Not enough. And we have to do our best to uh, encourage both sides. The side of the Khums in one side hmm. and side of the government, the government in yeah. Iraq yeah. to spend hmm. on the people, hmm. the poor people there hmm. before spending on other things. Okay. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. alaikum uh, I'm Dr. Gilani here again. Sorry, I think I didn't put my question correct actually last time. Yeah. I have, my question was actually about Wahhabi Zionists. Mm. Now, uh, the Jewish Zionists, at least they don't kill their own people. Okay. And how come the Muslim Zionists kill their own people? Because uh, the so-called Muslim, of course, we believe that they are Muslims, but they are misled Muslims. The extreme Wahhabis who kill people, they kill them because they believe that they are not Muslims. Hmm. Nowadays, see, the people are being killed in Bahrain. The Wahhabi sheikhs are not only keeping quiet, not only not saying any word against the oppression, but also encouraging killing the people in Bahrain because they are mostly Shias. They are Shias, yes. Because they believe that they are non-Muslims. Mm. And that is one of the tragedies among Muslims that you find people who claim to be Muslims, they are Muslims, but mis misled Muslims. I mean, who killed 
الإمام علي عليه السلام هو كلد أول أهل البيت هو سيد ما منا إلا مقتول أو مسموم no one from us will be will be dying natural death either will be killed or poisoned who killed them tell me any Jewish any Christian any non-Muslim no all the murderers were people who claim to be Muslims those who are the munafiqeen the hypocrites about whom Allah says إن المنافقين في الدرك الأسفل من النار the hypocrites are in the lowest level of the hellfire mm -hmm. Um, I read that what lady was trying to um, uh, ask was, we understand that the, the, Wahhabis, the Wahhabis are killing us because we are Shias and we are, according to them, Kafir. But what she meant was that the Wahhabi Zionism is killing their own people. So what, what do you say to that? Wahhabi Zionism is what? The Zionists, the extremists, the Wahhabis, the, they are killing their own people as well, as well as... Uh, the Shias. Okay, they kill their own peoples because they don't care for human life. I mean, those who go out, out of the real way of Islam, the real way of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, they keep on having their uh, fanatic opinions about others. And mm. you find them yesterday with someone, today they call him Kafir. Mm. Yes, we have got books written against Wahhabi sheikhs by Wahhabis calling the other sheikh of uh, Wahhabi as a kafir. Oh God. Yes. I mean, there is a very famous sheikh who comes in on the TV and Arab channels. I have seen a book written by a Wahhabi sheikh against that Wahhabi sheikh calling that Wahhabi sheikh as a dog. Oh God. They call him Al-Kalb Al-Awi, means barking dog. And that, who call, they call him barking, barking dog, is a very big Wahhabi sheikh. Okay. Yes. So that means, again, uh, coming back to our uh, topic, that th some people have distorted Qur'an's explanation is totally different. Yeah. Quran, um, according to them, they're Quran very right. Is, Quran is intact. Yeah. And no one can distort Qur'an. But people did. And they are now distorting the meanings of Quran. Meaning. For example, Allah says in Quran, Atiyu Allah, wa Atiyu Rasul, wa Oli Al Amr Minkum. Obey Allah, obey the Messenger, mm. obey mm. those who have got authority on you. Mm. Means the infallibles mm. after the Prophet. Yeah. People who are away from Ahlul Bayt mm. distorted the meaning, and they said, "This is a verse means that we have to obey." Any ruler being tyrant, dictator, wrong, right, every, every ruler mm. must be obeyed as we obey Allah. As we this is a great mischief against Quran. Mm. Distorting the meaning of Quran. Mm. Allah never orders people to obey mm. the wrongdoers. Mm. On the contrary, Allah forbids us from obeying the wrongdoers. Mm. Allah says, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ mm. Don't rely on the wrongdoers, otherwise the fire will take you away. Mm. So the distortion of the meaning is going on. It's going on, yeah. But the Quran, as Quran, is intact. Is intact, it's a miracle intact. Uh, we, um, I think we did men talk about this question has come up again. If you can explain in detail the difference between Shias and Sunnis, talaq, the divorce, the procedure of uh, divorce, okay. uh, the difference, and what is the importance in, in our Sharia? The Islam of Ahlul Bayt, which is the Islam of the Prophet, puts many conditions in front of talaq while encourages marriage we always see that islam of ahlul bayt encourages marriage mm. for example we don't have a condition that it should be publicized while non-shia muslims say that you must publicize the marriage otherwise the marriage 
will be invalid. We say no, it is not invalid. The witness on the marriage is recommended according to the Islam of Ahlul Bayt. According to our Muslim brothers who are not following Ahlul Bayt, they say that marriage without witness is invalid. Yeah. We say it is valid. Okay, all right. Okay. That's a very important so point. So we always encourage marriage. And we always discourage divorce. See, non-Shia Muslims say that if anyone out of anger said, talaq, 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 finished. His yeah. wife is divorced. divorced. Yeah. Finished. We say in the Ahlul Bayt teachings, which are the teachings of the Prophet, in fact, peace be upon him and his progeny, that this talaq is not talaq. It is just nonsense, mm. not a talaq. Talaq has got conditions. Number one, conditions in the wife. She should not be during her menses. Any talaq during menses is invalid. Number two, she should not be out of menses in a purity period, you know, between menses and menses, there's a purity of 28 days or more or less. In this purity days, if the husband and wife had a married sexual relationship, then talaq is invalid during that period of purity as well. Okay. Also, conditions on the husband that he should not be angry. He should not be forced. He should not be out of his senses, of course, like somebody who is drunk or somebody who has taken drugs. Anyone who has lost his senses or he is not in his full senses his talaq is invalid when he is not in his full senses. Mm -hmm. Also, there are conditions on the people who should witness without two pious witnesses. Two pious witnesses, there is no talaq. Without two pious witnesses, the talaq is invalid. Okay. So, in the school of Ahlul Bayt, which is the real Islam, there are conditions. Without these conditions, the talaq is invalid. But if someone, a lady, once she went to the court in any country and she took talaq from the court, divorce from the court, does it make her divorced from her husband? The answer is no. Mm. She is not yet divorced. Because the court divorce does not amount to real Islamic divorce unless the court is an Islamic court, mm -hmm. according okay. to the Islamic rules. Okay. But any court? No. Mm -hmm. Only the Islamic courts can it issue can. Islamic divorce. Okay. Yeah. And even Islamic courts, uh, according to School of Alibad? It should be. Okay. I mean, Islamic yeah. court should be with all the conditions the of the court. Okay. Okay. The Islamic court mm. should be with all the conditions. Mm. Now, but if, if any uh, non-Shia yeah. person wants to divorce his wife, he can go to yeah. non-Shia yeah, divorce his wife. But the, the, Shia. the divorce uh, within, I mean, among the non-Shia mm. Muslims uh, has no conditions which we have. Right. Okay. okay. Here I would like to say something. Mm. Uh, a lady asked through the website, yeah. uh, wabel.com, mm. that she has asked her husband to give her divorce. Mm. And he refused. So she said that I took khula. Khula, yeah. Khula which is in Arabic, yeah. from him. Mm. 
and now she wants to marry someone else. The answer, how did you take khula? Khula is not a single-sided decision, not your decision, mm -hmm. no. Khul is a type of divorce in which the wife offers okay. the husband something, mm -hmm. money, kind, her remaining of the mahar, mm -hmm. more, less. Okay. She offers him something that he agrees okay. to divorce her. So it has to be mutual. He must agree. Hmm. It is not only that she offered and finished. He has to agree, yeah. If he did not agree, hmm. there is no divorce. And also when he agrees, he has to recite or someone on his behalf to recite hmm. the divorce of hmm. khula. Hmm. So khula is not one-sided. Okay. It should be agreed upon by okay. both parties. Okay. Yeah, hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. Um, Salaam alaikum to the Sayyid and Salaam alaikum to the Chief Sister as well. Yes. Um, my question is basically, I've got two questions. First question is basically, um, is there any signs that we can actually refer to of coming of uh, Imam Mehdi now? And what signs are there? And secondly, uh, my second question is uh, slightly off topic. Um, I was in uh, London just recently, um, a couple of days ago, and uh, um, there was a group of uh, brothers uh, from the other school that... Um, we're doing a dava on the high street, as you as they normally do in London and that. And uh, one of the what? sheikhs doing what? Sorry, da dava, dava, to da uh, Muslim da converting them. Yeah, yeah. And da uh, one of the sheikhs, uh, he actually, I was there at, the, at that time, and he actually converted a sister to um, Islam and that. And mm -hmm. uh, basically, what he said to her afterwards, when I was there, he said to her that to uh, keep uh, this basically in secret, away from her family. So I was trying to ask the Sheikh, is, I mean, to say it, is this a form of takia? Because he actually said to her to, uh, to, uh, not to uh, tell her family and keep it away until, you know, like she's ready and, you know, she's strong enough to speak to her family to let them know that, you know, she's accepted Islam. But meanwhile, like, she should practice in secret. Taqiyya. So, I mean, uh, isn't this of course, a form yes. of uh, takia? Of course, yes. I mean, every human being, listen to me, please, my brother. Every human being believes in taqiyya. Every human being practices taqiyya. Taqiyya mm. is to avoid yourself or your family or your community the harm. That is something logical. The opponents of Shia Islam who claim that Shia Muslims use taqiyya and it is wrong, they themselves are doing taqiyya. Okay. You know the person who was killed yesterday? You know how many thousands of Wahhabis praise him in their meetings, in their private gatherings, but in front of outsiders they say, no, no, we don't mm. have anything to do with him. Yeah. They utaqiyya. They hide what they believe. Mm. And inside they call him Sheikh so-and-so. I don't want to mention his name. Mm. But I should say that the person who killed thousands of innocents. Innocent people, yes. How can you claim him a representative of Muslims? Is Islam a religion of killing innocents? No. Islam which forbids killing even animals for no reason. Those who kill innocents are called leaders of Islam? Mm. No, they are not leaders of Islam and they are wrongdoers. Let them go with their leaders who were killing the innocents like Muawiyah and Yazid and Hajjaj and all the tyrants who killed thousands of innocents. So all of them are practicing taqiyya. And as you have mentioned, that Sheikh told the lady not to show that she became Muslim, taqiyya. Mm. So they accuse us and they themselves do the same. Yeah, but sometimes they do for the wrong reasons. The taqiyya is used in a very uh, that different is manner. A different, different matter. But mm. I, I say about the principle of taqiyya. The principle of taqiyya. Principle of avoiding harm, mm. yeah. hiding what you believe in, in some mm. circumstances, yeah. has been 
yeah. practice everywhere. Right. And, and it as a logic. Allah said, Illa an tattaqu. Allah says in Quran, Illa an tattaqu minhum tuqa. Means you can hide your faith mm. to avoid harm Allah. of the enemies. Right. But my brother, why those who don't believe in Ahlul Bayt go place to place, house to house, to invite people to the wrong ideas. And we, the believers in real Islam, believers in Ahlul Bayt, we don't do inviting people to yeah. the real Islam. That's a good it question. It is not a pity. Yes. It is really a pity. Okay. It is sad to see that mm. those who are away from Ahlul Bayt, not only the... Okay. Those okay. Muslims, but all of some non-Muslims who knock the doors and try to convince people about wrong ideas, which are un-Islamic ideas about father and son and, uh, you know. Mm. And those who believe in the real faith are busy in other and things. Other things. Yes, we have please. another call, the last yeah. call. Uh, hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam, sister of Sayyid uh, Kobi. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam, Rahmatullah, Barakatuh, brother. Sayyid, my first question is about the talk. If no person is from the school, he is from the other Islamic school, such as the Sunnah or the Jamaat, or from the other people, then he gives his wife a divorce from his wife. If he gives his wife, تو بعد میں اس کو اس غلطی کا احساس ہوتا ہے تو اس کی وہ اگر حال تلاش کرتا ہے تو اسے حال ملتا ہے کہ اہل بیت کے سکول آف تھوٹ میں یہ حال موجود ہے اس کا تو کیا وہ اگر وہ شیعہ ہو جائے تو اس کی بیگم کو جو اس نے طلاق دی وہ انویلڈ ہو جائے گی یا نہیں میرا سوال آپ سمجھے گے نہیں جی ہاں بالکل سمجھے جناب یہ ایک پہلا سوال ہے یہ پہلا سوال ہے تو دوسرا سوال میرا یہ ہے کہ آیا یہ مباہلہ میں علی علیہ السلام کو نفس رسول کہا گیا تو اس کا جو میرے ذہن میں سادہ سا ترجمہ میرے ذہن میں آتا ہے وہ یہ کہ علی ہے رسالت کے نفس اور اب رسالت سے علی کو جدا اگر کر سکتے ہیں یا کسی مقام پر بھی رسالت سے یہ نفس یعنی علی علیہ السلام جدا ہو سکتے ہیں چاہے کوئی بھی اسلام کا اعقام ہو اچھا جناب پہلا سوال کا جواب یہ ہے کہ اگر وہ اہل بیت کے ماننے والا ہوگا تو اہل بیت کے احکام کے اوپر وہ طلاق باطل اور اس کے اہلیہ اس کے لئے واپس ہوگی اس کے اہلیہ رہے گی same is being done now by الازہر in Egypt الازہر now Not now, since many years, they have adopted the fiqh of Ahlul Bayt and for them the talaq rules are according to Ahlul Bayt to save thousands of houses from disasters. Yeah, but uh, he said that the wife belongs to a different fir firqa. Uh, okay. If, if the husband becomes follower of Ahlul Bayt, okay. then the fiqh of al-bayt will be applied oh, on okay. him. Well, that's good. Okay. And the second matter about nafs rasul mm. I just want to tell you that Ma'moon Abbasi, one of the famous kings in the dynasty of Bani Abbas, asked Imam Rida alayhi salam about the greatest tribute of Ali alayhi salam in Quran. Imam alayhi salam said, the verse of Mubahla. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا See? فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ And he called Ali as his nafs. Imam told Ma'amun, this is the greatest verse in Quran about the status of Ali, which according to Allah is nafs rasul. Nafs rasul. Of course, Ali is not rasul. إلا أنه لا نبي بعده is not a prophet but his status is نفس رسول we say اللهم بحق محمد وآل محمد oh Allah keep us with the sincere followers of محمد and آل محمد with them always and don't 
leave us be away from them even a second or part of second in our life Allahumma la tufarraq baynana wa bayna Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa bayna al-afiyah tarfat aynin abada fi dunya wa al-akhirah again I would like to remind my sisters and brothers that every day before sunset and before sunrise it is highly recommended to say ten times subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa Allah wallahu akbar every day before sunset and sunrise as well that is an order in Quran وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب may Allah bless you all and keep all of us with the sincere servants of Muhammad and his holy progeny and the Bayt alayhum salam talking about subhanallah alhamdulillah I recite it in namaz isha and maghrib as well can you do that Yes, yeah. that is the third, in the third and fourth rak'at. Yeah, yeah. But it is mustahab before maghrib to say okay. that ten times. And before sunrise as well ten times. Thank you, Agha. We are fast approaching uh, maghrib azan time now. Thank you very much indeed. I had many questions again. Fun. Hopefully by next next week we will talk in depth uh, about Walaid al-Faqi and Walaid al-Faqi, difference between the two. And many, many more questions are here to, to, to be clarified. Uh, Nazreen, hopefully uh, you have uh, uh, learned so much from our honorable guest lecture and discussion. And of course, I have every time I sit here, I'm learning so much. I think till my last breath, I'll be learning more and more and more. Because according to um, a moment, it's بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين